you're all doing well. This is episode 14 on Agronomy Moment. It's hard to believe we're already racing through another season. Corn is basically on the verge of done, and we have a few weeks left on soybeans, and we're going to be ready for harvest. Anyway, just want to talk a little bit today about a couple things. Um, earlier this summer, uh, we had talked about stock rot in corn and being aware of that. With some of these rains we've had recently, they may have started some anthracnose disease and different things um, like that. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit in a video of a field that I was in and um, show the stock test and how to check for how to peel back the leaves and check for um, the rot in the nodes and whether that can be a harvest issue. The other thing I've been noticing at different places in the field and places that were stressed a lot is some ear molds, different types actually than I'm normally seeing from just like your basic ones from earworms. And some of them, I wasn't sure if they were earworms. Some of them um, were different. And I gave Scott a call and talked to him a little bit about the different things we're seeing and thought you might be interested to know about some of that. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and give Scott a shout, bring him on, and then when he gets wrapped up, we'll um, watch that video on stock rot that I've noticed in the field in one particular case. So without further ado, we'll get started. Hey, Scott. Good day to you. Hey, how are you doing? doing? Good. How are you today? Not too bad. I've been out walking some fields and... Um, Anyway, I was just looking at, at different ears of corn and stuff, and I noticed some molds on them, and, and typically I'm not too concerned about it, but I would like to know a little bit more about it, and especially if it would relate to, you know, potential any harvest or grain quality. And I thought sure. we'd just kind of go through this list here of pictures I sent you as we're okay. by phone today. And I don't know if you're able to see on your phone the first picture I sent you. Um, it has a little bit of white mold there on the top, and it's kind of crawling down the side of the ear. Yep. What, yeah, you it know looks what like that in that, in that, in that particular ear, you know, you do have a little bit of, is that the one with the green mold at the top? Yeah, I think you I think you got the right one, yep. Yeah, the one that has a little bit of the green at the top. Um, that one's a little tough to tell by color so, uh, on the photograph. Sometimes... You, there's two primary ones that have a green mold that will look that color. One would be aspergillus, which could uh, form aflatoxin, and the other would be yeah. penicillium, which can also form an, a, a, a mycotoxin. Um, so both of those would be mycotoxin-forming funguses, but, you know, typically uh, just because we have those funguses present on an ear doesn't automatically mean that we have uh, mycotoxin present. So, yes. But uh, looking at that particular ear and uh, kind of just from what I'm seeing, it looks more aspergillus-like to me but it could be penicillium in that particular picture. And the white that you're seeing is a little bit of frass from uh, worm feeding on the ears, and that white uh, uh, mealy material. That's uh, just yes. uh, remnants from the worms feeding down some of those kernels on those ears. Gotcha. And, and just to confirm that on the right photo, it has the lettering on the left-hand side. Yes. Yep, that's the right one. Correct. Yep. So you're thinking that there is some aspergillus on there, and then the worm feeding would be the white portion of it yes the green, yep. green and that worm, yep and that worm material that worm feeding material would be a perfect spot for more uh, funguses and things to kind of develop on that ear as well so gotcha yep okay so that's what i was wondering is this this ear in particular was in a hot and dry area that did not get rain and so um it's very i mean it's very possible right that aspergillus would would definitely be a potential in that in climate it you're could be, correct. yes. Uh, it's you know, possible. I, use, you know, I, I tend to see both of those in similar environments over years. You know, you'll see both penicillium and aspergillus kind of intermixed. Uh, penicillium tends to be a little green, uh, bluer in color, uh, blue-green, whereas the aspergillus tends to be more of a gray-green in color, typically. Okay, got you. So those two there would be in those similar environments, and they would have a, they'd be, they are different. They have a slightly different color, and we're not sure because obviously you're looking at a picture and you're not in the field of exactly which one it might be. But we could probably narrow it to one of those two. Yes. 
And so then moving on to the next um, picture there, I'm looking at the one where the ear is kind of pointed off to the left and hanging down a little bit, and you see a number 18 kind of at the base on the shucks. And yep. it's got a little bit of scarring and some mold in the kernels uh, towards the top. Is it kind of the same thing we've been looking at? or? You do have some worm feeding there as well, but you also in that picture have some fusarium uh, kernel rot, fusarium ear rot developing in the tip kernels of that ear. You can see some of the white star bursting in some of the kernels from yeah. there, the silk scar, and then that white that's building underneath some of those kernels, that, it, that would be from the fusarium kernel rot. So now talking about fusarium kernel rot, um, any grain quality usually there? Not really, or is it you generally you okay, typically? You can't. You can see some uh, mycotoxin development from that as well, but usually uh, I don't see as big an issue. So the um, so looking at the you said that was fusarium of that starburst type on those kernels, and and typically you said yep. it's not a big issue on mycotoxin, and is that largely because it's usually not a big deal as much far as as it relates to how much grain there is? It's usually a small percentage, and it hardly affects the total volume or. I'm, I'm not really sure why we don't tend to run into issues as often. It does produce humonocins, I believe, is the mycotoxin produced by fusarium. And it can yeah. be a bad one. But over the years, uh, since I've been back in Missouri, I can only remember one really bad year where we got into problems with mycotoxin with fusarium. And almost every year we have fusarium ear rot at some place somewhere in the area I cover. So I don't know really why, yeah. if it's just one that's not as closely monitored or if it's just not as big a producer of mycotoxin in our geography. But um, I've seen I see. fusarium every year, and I just don't normally hear of major issues with it. Yes, because I, I, that's a familiar sight to me to see that starburst a little bit across the field here and there. Right. Um, so moving on to the next picture, I'm showing where we're backed away a little bit. Maybe I've backed away too far with the with the camera, but there's an ear kind of poking out of the shucks. It looks kind of like it's short shucked, and the kernels have all turned black, and then there's a few lighter colored ones. Do you have any ideas with that type of a photo, what we could be looking at? Well, that picture's kind of interesting because you it seems as though you found that one in an area, an opening in a field where there's not many plants right. around it. So I don't, I don't know if because of that environment where that ear is particularly growing, if that caused those husks to have problems developing. Um, you know, there are multiple environmental conditions that can cause short husking, but this year I've not seen much of that at all. So I don't expect that to be a major problem unless you've been seeing it more widespread than that. No, I haven't. Um, to a little background there is um, I just noticed that it would turn black, and maybe that's just because it's being exposed to the weather and the moisture. But um, as you went back in the field, I took another picture. I don't have it in this slide, but there was it had they had shot a lot of tassels had had those ears on the ends of it, and it looked like it just really had a hard time um, figuring out what it was trying to do this year. And I don't even know now what the number is or anything. It's just I just noticed what? it, and I just wondered what if it had gotten bitten by a bug or a disease or something early on. Yeah. So tassel ears are usually always on a sucker. If you see a tassel ear, it's a sucker. So that's, uh -huh. that's what you're running into there. So um, that's not normally a major issue. The, the, what you're calling on the blackening of that ear, you can tell a lot of those kernels were fed by um, insects because those kernels were exposed due to the short husk on yep. that particular plant. And that's why you're seeing those malformed kernels is due to insect feeding due to uh, due to the exposure to the environment. Sure. You can see okay. in that picture, actually, there's a green stink bug on there feeding on those kernels right now in that picture. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's largely why it's turned black, is just because of the feeding. Yeah. And those kernels are yeah. all split open. Yep. Makes sense. Moving on to the next one. and It's the one that we've got the three ears in the picture, and the one in the center is pointed straight up. And towards our side, I don't know if it's the best photo, but it looks like the kernels have gotten bitten off, but really I don't think they have. It looks like more they got shrunken or something, and it looks like maybe a disease is in there. Yes, yeah, so those again almost look like fusarium. The picture is kind of difficult for me to tell, but that almost looks yep. like fusarium kernel rot in that particular, uh, particular picture, and the kernels have ruptured uh, due to that. Either that or it was due to silk cutting. Sometimes when the silks in the ear can uh, cut the pericarp on that kernel and cause yeah. them to open up. And so it's possible that it was silk cutting, but it looks more like there's possibly some fusarium and two or three kernels there that ruptured. Okay, okay. 
Interesting. Moving on to the next one, you see a little smaller picture, and there's an ear poking up, pointing to the right a little bit. Yep. And it's got white, and the white is coming down all fuzzy down into the kernels from the top. Yep. Even though it's not it's not all earworm feeding, don't look like it's definitely we got white mold or something growing in between kernels further down. Yeah, that does not look like Diplodia to me. I'm not sure what mm -hmm. fungus that would be unless it's some fusarium in that picture. It's hard to tell because I can't see the kernels uh, where it would have sure. originated as well. So it's kind of hard to tell on that particular one. And with the heavy rains, you know, is that that looks like corn that's probably under a pivot. Um, is that correct? Yeah, you're probably right. I, I did not. I just went through my photos as I was trying to grab because I've been observing this last few weeks, and I just quick snapped some here, and I'm not sure. That might be. No, I think it was. I'm not sure. I'm not it sure. Does, it, it looks like something related to probably some of the wet we've had lately. You know, obviously that would allow some diseases to be a little more prevalent, but I can't really, I, I can't personally identify what that one is for sure. Okay. This one here is actually a dry land, but it's 117 day, and it, so it's been really taking advantage of the rain's late. And, but you yeah. can tell by the deep mouth formation of that ear on the one side, it's a little zippered, and so it's definitely went through some stress. Okay. So, All right. But, yes, yeah, so it has had a lot of rain the last, you know, a couple of weeks ago. We had a lot of rain, so. Um, and then we move on to the last one, and that one has that dark black charcoal-ish stuff on it. What's going on here? I'd have to look that one up. That one's not a very common one. Um, it's it's possible. You can see underneath there, there's a little bit of aspergillus in the green underneath yes. the, the black mold. Um, I'm having a little trouble yeah. on that black one. I didn't see this picture a minute ago, so I didn't get to look that up for you. I apologize sure. on that. The other thing you can see in that particular image is a whole lot of fusarium along the left side. You notice how every one of those kernels has the star bursting from the silk scar. And so yep, there's a lot yes. of, there's like three different diseases in there. Um, you know, I almost wonder if that's not an off type of aspergillus, that black, um, uh -huh. black mold, if it's not a different uh, biotype or something. Um, there's yep. also some other diseases. I can't remember the name um, for sure what it's called. Uh, if it's nigrosporum, I believe is what it's called. But I'd have okay. to look that one up. No worries. We'll wrap up for now. And, um, but, I'll touch base with you before I go to press. If there's any um, edits to do that you think of, I'll just include it in my closing, in the closing there for everybody. And so um, we'll just, you'll spend a little time. And if you see something different, what you just said, then that's what we'll do. I'll just run a little okay. edit up in the, in the wrap up. And so I really appreciate what you've done today. I think what I'm going to lead off with, or actually I might just pop this in is, the other day I sent you a video a little bit on some of the stock rot we were seeing, and thanks yes, to sir. you showing me how to identify that, I was able to do some of those testings when I was out looking at corn, and I didn't know if you had any comments on that or not. It's kind of like what we talked about, I think, the end of July to be on the lookout for, right, to plan your harvest route just in case you had some cannibalization of stocks. Or Yes, sir, and it looked like in your video that um, – one of the keys there I thought that you made sure to point out was to peel the leaf sheaths off of that lower part of the stalk so that you actually see the rind of the stalk. And in that case, oh, yeah, sure. uh, some of your video, it was pretty easy to see um, um, anthracnose stalk rot was developing in there. You could see the black lesions in the stalk rinds okay. uh, from the nodes yep. down, the inner nodes, uh, going from the node down into the inner nodes. And so there were some yep. obvious and no stock rot beginning in those fields. So it'll be definitely worthwhile to keep track of stocks here in the next week or so as we approach harvest and make sure that, like you said, that you're tracking along with which fields should go first. Good deal. Yeah, that's what I was wanting you to kind of clarify a few things there because um, I didn't know exactly what exactly what disease that was that had gotten the stock rot, but um, anthracnose. Sure. So That'll be good to know because I'll pop that video in here with the rest of this, and um, we'll um, send that out. But I really appreciate you uh, taking that time again, and we'll catch you again next time. All righty. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that was great to tap Scott's mind there a little bit on his 
tap into some of his knowledge that he had on um, ear molds here in the fall. And they've, most of the time, not a big issue, but it is something to be aware of. And as I mentioned, if there was anything that was different that he studied since we had talked, I would do a follow-up. And he texted me later that that last picture of the black colored mold or the charcoal colored mold is Aspergillus niger. So thought we would make sure we did that follow up. So if you had any questions on that yet, we did look into that a bit more. So anyway, next we're going to move on to this video on how to do a stock test and how to use your knife to shave back the rind on the stocks after you've pulled back all the leaves to be able to expose the stock. And we're going to jump right into that video. And along with these ear molds, it's a good thing to just be aware of what's in your field and if you need to reroute your harvest plans on which field comes out first. Um, it can make a difference on harvesting corn on the ground or harvesting it still standing. So just wanting to make sure that um, everyone's out there alert for that. So we'll roll the video. Hello, this is Wendell Cohen here with uh, Top Ag Services. I'm out here in a in a field and I noticed a hybrid here that has um, some compromised stock integrity, probably due to some of the humidity and diseases that infected the stock. And um, just wanted to kind of demonstrate um, right pre-harvest a, a ways to check your fields to make sure that your stocks have good integrity to hold up through harvest. And if they are weakened, um, to be able to know to choose those for your maybe your first out fields to go harvest so just when you push on these plants and you push them over to about the right angle to push to it on a 30 inch row is to the next row and if you feel it give and it kinks you probably have a stock integrity challenge and if you don't know if you can see this in here, if I can zoom out when I'm pushing on this stock, this one is staying firm. I can push it clear over there and it rebounds back. This one I push over and as you can see, it stays put, it kinks over. We see down here where it kinked. There's definitely some compromise that was happened to the stock on the inside whether it got cannibalized or so if you go down here and peel away the leaves like we just did and take your knife and you cut in there you can see that's all black in there from disease it's basically getting cannibalized from the inside this is a this is a if you find this in your field this is a first out situation we let this sit too long until late September, we get some fall rains and wind, it will be a potential problem. As you can see, you can see that there, the interior is just simply, this integrity of the interior is gone. We see this rot has, black rot has went into the, into the node. And that's why we're seeing this problem. So, just wanted to do a little video. This is how, um, if you want to see and inspect your fields to make sure that everything's good, come out here as you walk through the rows and push over on the on the stocks to the next row. That will give you a good indication on how much it can take. If it rebounds right back, you're pretty good for today. And if it kinks over, then you can peel back the leaves and shave that node with a knife and see if there's any um, rot going on in there. So that concludes our podcast today, episode 14. As we mentioned earlier, we're always thankful for Scott and his contribution this year on agronomy. And as we are nearing the close of 2020, I want to give him a special thanks for all what he has done, as well as this podcast today. 
He's been a regular contributor to this effort. Also, for those of you listening, I want to thank you too for listening to this podcast. We realize that it's not perfect. We're not professionals at this by any means, but we're trying to get the word out to you on a timely fashion, and we definitely want to hear from you if you find this valuable to your operation. Anyway, if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. We will be back next time. Cheers to all of you.